which would allow you to, to globally define short circuit values to be used in the calculation of your, of your instant energy. At this point, what we would like to do is for the program to automatically run the short circuit study and determine the instant energy from the calculated results. The next section that I want to talk about will be the full clearing time or FCT section. The full clearing time section of this uh, ArcFlash tab allows us to define the method that the program will use to determine the full clearing time. The default option is the auto select source PD option and it basically means that the program will automatically select the source protected device uh, from the time current characteristics of all the protected devices in the, si in the system. Basically, ETAP it will, will calculate the arc and current and it will choose which protected device trips the arc fault. The next options below the auto select source PD option are used to, to, to automatically override the system from making its uh, independent selection of the source speed of the source PD. It, clicking on the user defined source PD option will will tell the program that you want to you may want to use a different source protected device in order to determine the calculation. However, it will use the automatic determination for others uh, for the rest of the system in there. And I will show a quick example of how to apply this this option later on during the presentation. The next option is called limit maximum full clearing time, which is an option that is provided in order to take credit for a clause in IEEE 1584 that uh, states that you could potentially get away from an arc location in less than two seconds or two seconds. In essence, if the response of the full clearing, uh, or the, uh, if the response of the protected devices uh, or the full clearing time is longer than two seconds, ETAP would automatically calculate the incident energy value at two seconds. Uh, therefore, you, you have the option to, to apply this clause or not, and you can apply it by simply selecting the checkbox over here. The next section that I want to talk about will be the system grounding. ETAP has been designed to automatically change or detect the system grounding configuration for the entire system. The default option on the ArcFlash tab is configured for the one-line diagram connection. Basically, ETAB will search the grounding connection for, for the entire system, and it will determine whether the system is grounded or ungrounded, uh, according to IEEE 1584 definitions. Basically, IEEE 1584 says that if a system is high resistance, low resistance, transformer grounded or resistance grounded, or delta connected, it should be considered as, un as ungrounded. If a system is solidly grounded, then it will be considered as a grounded system. Determining the system grounding is actually very important because it can change the amount of incident energy uh, calculated for an arc fault by up to 10 or 15%. And I will show you an example of the impact of the grounding connection. The next section that's, that I want to talk about is the method. The method basically is shown on the upper uh, right-hand side part of this ArcFlash tab. And basically, it, it shows you that you have the NFPA 7E 2004 or the IEEE 1584 method. For the purpose of this presentation and the time limitation, I'm only going to focus on the IEEE 1584 method because it's the one that is being most commonly used to do the analysis. Uh, along with the 1584 method, we are also applying arc and current variation, which is uh, recommended by IEEE 1584 in order to correct some of the uh, possible errors in the empirical equations used, used by the method. Typically, for uh, system voltages less than 1,000 volts, uh, the variation in the arc and current can be, can be quite significant. Uh, and IEEE recommends that you perform two sets of calculations, one at 100% of the original arc and current value, 
and a second calculation at a reduced value of 85%. And then you would perform uh, the incident energy calculation based on those two arc incurrent values, and you would report or you would use uh, the one that would produce the most conservative amount of incident energy. ETAP automatically will determine this situation, and it will perform uh, the two calculations for low voltage systems, and it will tell you if it finds any situation under which the arc incurrent variation causes a higher incident energy value. At this point, the last item that I want to talk about in our study case will be the PPE hazardous categories, which are basically uh, the way the program quantizes the amount of incident energy that is found for a particular arc fault. Uh, you can select between the NFPA 78 2000, the NFPA 78 2004, or you can user define your own values for, for category levels. If you use the NFPA 78 2004, a standard for defining the, the hazard risk category levels, uh, you would basically be working with, with the following options, which can be uh, viewed by going to your project settings and then selecting the hazard risk categories. In this window, <coughs> you can see the different uh, hazardous categories that can be used to quantize the amount of incident energy. The first one is the, 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 the original release of the NFPA 70E2000, which shows you uh, f uh, five categories starting from zero to four. And the first category zero was set at 1.2, and the threshold for category one will be at five. For the NFPA 70E2004 edition, it was slightly changed to a category, to two category, calories per centimeter square for category zero, and four calories per centimeter square for category one. Basically, if you want to go with the NFPA 78 2000 or 78 or 2004 versions, you can switch between your options here. Or if you wanted to define your own set of categories, you click on the user defined values, and at this point you can define up to ten different categories uh, with uh, actually a higher amount of incident energy value than is recommended or allowed by the NFPA 70E method. Of course, engineering judgment should be applied uh, in working with energized equipment that exceeds the maximum value recommended by NFPA, which is 40 calories per centimeter square. Along with defining your own uh, range limits for the categories, you can define the personal protective equipment that would be printed on your labels and reports for each, for each determined category. The one that is currently shown on the screen is, has been taken from the NFPA 70E definitions for a Category 4 protective system, which in essence will be a multi-layer fire rated flash jacket and uh, bib overalls with a minimum arc rating of 4 calories per centimeter square. Of course, you can also define your own personal protective equipment to be used for a Category 4. At the same time, you can also enter disclaimers and user-defined text, which would appear on your labels once you perform the analysis. At this point, at this point, I would like to focus back on the one-line diagram and show you some of the items and, and how to determine or how to understand the results that we have in the system. Going back to our original low voltage example, uh, we, we, we can see that the program calculated the arcing current, which is 14.87, a category three, which will be higher than eight calories per centimeter square. In this case, we have 8.66 calories per centimeter square, which takes us to the category three level. The flash protection boundary is shown right below the category three uh, limit, and is shown as 5.74 feet. Basically, that will be the distance at which the incident energy would only be 1.2 calories per centimeter square. If we go back to our, to our bus, and double click and go to the R flash page. You will notice that the program has automatically populated the results for this arc location under the calculated section of the uh, on, on the bus. This section right here will show you all the results for the global arc flash calculation. For a fault on bus on bus one, the program has determined that the source PD is CV22, which is the main breaker on this switch here, 
Uh, it also has determined that you have a 14.87 kiloamp amount of 